was love at the cross where Jesus suffered pain. There was power in the blood that flowed from his veins. There was joy at his presence when he rose from the tomb. There was life everlasting when he died for me and you. Love unspeakable, pain unbearable, forgiveness indescribable, and he did it all for me. Peace unexplainable, joy uncontainable, witness unrestrainable, when Jesus saved me. There was shouting in heaven, when I knelt in prayer When I called upon Jesus And he saved me there There was singing in glory When my name was written down In the book of eternal ages It will ever be found Now my sin is untraceable And my name unerasable my life unendable, my sins are in the deepest sea. Peace unexplainable, joy uncontainable, witness unrestrainable when Jesus saved me. Witness unrestrainable.
to get ready to get started. All right, all right, we're ready to get started today. <laughs> Go top off your coffees, whatever. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start music. Go ahead and stand with me. We're going to start page uh, 305. 305, stand with me. We're going to start singing. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Bring O earth his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Sing and honor into his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children in his arms. He carries his law all day long. Praise him, praise him, till of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. On the last, praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Family portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Jesus, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Help and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Brother Bradley, will you open us up in prayer? Amen. You may take your seats. Welcome, welcome this morning. Everybody's warm and dry in here. How many lost power at their house last night? That wind was howling last night. We was uh, our wall. One of our walls were were sleeping. You just hear it hitting, and it was wow. I didn't know what we were going to wake up to. What was uh, if what was going to be torn down? We had a tree taken out a few weeks ago on purpose, and I'm glad we did because I think that probably would have blown over. So, but welcome, glad everybody's here and safe. Uh, it's good to be in the Lord's house. It's good to see friends and family here. And Brother Dustin, uh, on a little sabbatical for a week from uh, Southwest training. And uh, so, uh, so glad you're here, brother. It's a good treat to see. Um, uh, this is uh, Celia and Anna's last Sunday here. Um, we'll still be here for a couple weeks. We're taking a trip this weekend, next weekend. And, uh, but uh, this is their last Sunday in in church, and they'll, uh, a week from Wednesday they'll be in church, but then they go back to school, and the, the reality hits again. So, um, so, but so glad you're here, so, uh, so uh, awesome to be uh, uh, opening the Word of God and getting to uh, see what the Lord has for us today. Today we are going to be talking uh, a great book. We're going to be in, a, in the book of Ruth, which is sandwiched between Judges and the two Samuels in the front of your uh, Old Testament there. A little book uh, that uh, uh, <clears throat> we see, um, uh, we're going to be talking about Ruth in this case, uh, the, the um, title of the, of the book, and uh, her journey and how she became used of God and how she got to where she was, um, uh, kind of defeat from uh, to victory. Um, we are all going to go through times in our lives in valleys. We're going to go through times where... Uh, we're going to feel defeated. And when you feel defeated, you feel useless. 
don't you? You feel like I could never be used of God. I could never be, um, I could never be respected maybe uh, by my family or my friends. I just feel defeated. And uh, in this case, Naomi, Ruth's mom, uh, did feel defeated. Uh, uh, Ruth's mother-in-law, soon to be, mo- or mother-in-law, yes, as we, as we said. So a uh, little background. Ruth is a uh, Moabite, Moabite. And if you've been reading your, um, uh, your uh, maybe the read-through in the year and we started the new year, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have read recently about Lot. Lot's such an awesome character, isn't it? I, I, it's, but he was the father of the Moabites, right? And you would think that in, in, a, uh, in a situation with Lot and his daughters and, and after Sodom and Gomorrah and how he lived and the fact that he... Uh, uh, these children of his, uh, the Moabites come out, you would think God will never use somebody out of, out of this lineage. This is a disgraced lineage that God can never use, but God is going to use that lineage, and we'll see that. Um, but we're from defeat to victory, an ultimate victory here, what we see. So in our text, we're going to be in uh, the first uh, chapter, of, of Ruth um, 19 through 22 is where our text is going to be. And this is after um, Naomi's husband has died. Her sons have died. They've married Moabite women. Um, they have died. Uh, they left um, uh, in a time of famine and different things. And they went to another country to look for food and things like that. Not necessarily trusting God. And in that, they, the, the husband... And the sons have died, and now you've got Naomi, and she has, uh, she has told the two daughters-in-law to go back to their family. One did, but Ruth is going to stay with Naomi and go wherever she is. So, so we're in our text here, uh, Ruth 1, 19 through 22. So, the, they two went unto, uh, so they two went until they came to Bethlehem, back to God's uh, country there. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? So they recognized her. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Um, so, uh, so we have the, the beginning here of the, they came back, and Naomi is defeated. She is, uh, she's basically going with nothing, but she knows that I gotta go back to God's, God's land. I gotta go back to my homeland, and uh, she's got Ruth with her. So she, do, so she does have something. And God is going to use Ruth in a mighty way. And we, we too, when we are defeated, we're not done. In fact, if, if we have breath, God's gonna, God can use us. We'll let him. And so in this case, uh, we have, we're going to see this through Ruth um, uh, with her uh, mother-in-law, Naomi. So how do we see this? Number one. Uh, Ruth was faithful in following. She was faithful in following. One of the primary qualifications uh, for serving the Lord and being used of God is not your leadership ability. I wish it was. You know, we uh, trained in the military. How great. It's leadership. Or your intelligence. Or uh, your past actions and accomplishments. Your pedigree. That is not what is the primary factor uh, for uh, being used of God. It's faithfulness. It's faithfulness. And so in this case, in fact, in, in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, it says, moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Matthew 16, 24, uh, Jesus says to follow me. He said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Follow me, being faithful. Uh, again, he says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. And again in John, uh, let, if any man serve me in, in 1226, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And uh, where I am, there shall also my servant be. So follow me. It's about, um, it's about faithfulness. And uh, in this case, Ru- Ruth 
was faithful to Naomi. Uh, we'll see it again here, but I'll just go back to you. In, in, our, uh, in that first chapter, Ruth said in verse 16, Entreat me not to leave thee, and I'll return following from thee. From whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. She said, I will become, I will serve the God that you serve. That will be my God. So she is, she's going to be faithful in following. Uh, when you follow a, a, a military leader, we, we, there's two criteria that if you're, going, if you're going to leave, make sure you know where you're going. If you're going to follow, make sure the person you're following knows where he's going. And, and so uh, in this case, uh, Ruth knew that Naomi was, go, was, was going back to her God. And that she was going to follow, and that would be her God. So Naomi, in Ruth 22, so Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, uh, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem uh, at the beginning of the harvest. So she followed Naomi's path, letter A. She followed Naomi's path. Uh, <clears throat> God will lead us if you'll let him. Naomi decided to return to the city and, and to, uh, and she was not really, I mean, she didn't have a lot to report. She didn't say, oh, these wonderful things happened to me when I went. She was, she was defeated. She, she was, she was shamed. She was, uh, she said, don't call me Naomi. That was the, my birth name. Call me Mara. I'm, 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 ashamed, I'm shameful. I'm, I don't deserve my original name. But she came back anyway. Uh, I, I love the fact that if you, if you want to, if you follow the Lord, he will lead you. Uh, what a great story in Genesis 24, 27, the servant of Abraham. His job was to, he was, I was just reading it this morning. And he was, his, his, the servant, he was told by Abraham to go find a, a bride for my son Isaac. Because Abraham knew, he knew the promise that God had promised to make, make his, his, the nation uh, under Abraham just unable to count. And he was going to do that through Isaac. And so, he, so, so, uh, so his wife Sarah has died and he needed a, a bride and he wanted a bride from his people, not the Canaanites. And so he sent his servant, his, it said his oldest servant. So this servant was older. Most likely he treated, um, uh, he served Isaac, but he treated Isaac almost as a son. So this was a son. This is very important to him also. He wanted a, 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 the right kind of bride for Isaac. And so he was following the Lord. And, uh, and he says it. Uh, uh, he said in uh, 24, verse 27 of, of Genesis 24, uh, I being in the way, the Lord led me. As we're faithful to follow God, God leads us further. And God led uh, this servant to find the bride for, for Isaac. It was, it was clearly obvious. He said, Lord, uh, if I'll ask for water, and if she offers up to, to water the camels, then this is it. And even when she said that, he, he was kind of going, wow, that was... I wonder if he went and said, that was too easy. That was too easy. That's, is that right? <laughs> I said that and she did this immediately. Because it said as he was still talking to the Lord, as he was still praying, she walked up. God can do that. I think he does do that. I think he puts people in our, play, in, in our paths. Um, if, we just, if we'll just follow, we'll let him lead. Ruth, when she followed Naomi, I'm sure she had friends and family Back in Moab. She was leaving that. When you follow, you have to leave. My wife, when she grew up in South Carolina. Her whole life had been in South Carolina. And uh, when she married me, she actually used this verse to commit to me. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Thankfully, her God was my God already. But she was marrying a guy in the Air Force, a young guy in the Air Force. He's got a little ways to go. And she knew she was going to leave. She's going to leave her family. She's going to leave her friends. She's going to leave the familiar. And I took her to this desert. 
the Mojave Desert. I can tell you a funny story. My mom, we'd, we lived there as a kid. And my mom, who's a very, you've met my, uh, many of you have met my mom, Deanna, and uh, she's a very wise lady, and so she was very wise to my, to my wife, and I didn't realize this till years later, that we were driving, we were driving from South Carolina to California, we stop off in Texas where my mom and dad live, and so she gets a little time with my, my new bride, and she says, I'm so excited for you, Cheryl, you get to, you get to live a military life, be in church, be active, do whatever, and she goes, and you're going to Edwards in the middle of Mojave Desert. Okay, so we're driving separate cars. I'm driving a van, pulling a car. She's driving the other car, following me. She says, when you get to Edwards, you are going to weep. <laughs> weep all you want in the car. As you drive on the base, weep as you're handing your ID to the, to the gate guard. Weep the next 20 minutes to the next building at Edwards gets a big, big base. But when you park your car, dry your eyes, and start your adventure, you're going to have a great time. And I found out that's what she did. She was bawling the whole time driving onto that base. And I'm going, I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking I'm in fifth grade again. And I'm seeing all the trails in the, in the desert that I'm going to be riding on my bike or motorcycle I'm going to buy, you know, whatever. And she's just weeping, what did I do? We get to the billeting office, and I never knew. She, it was she, a few years later she told me, oh, yeah, I cried my eyes out, like your mom said. But she was faithful to follow, and she followed. So, so Ruth, letter A, she followed Naomi's path. B, she followed Naomi's counsel. There's some wise people to follow their counsel. Um, if it's, and if it's, the counsel's not biblical, it's probably not wise. Um, there's a lot of people on the Internet. I mean, you can, you can find anything uh, with, everybody has an opinion, right? Everybody does. Doesn't necessarily mean that opinion's right. Uh -huh. SEL. Right. SEL. Yep. So, um, so yeah. So everybody has an opinion. I have opinions, and I got to be careful of those opinions <laughs> because I, I have to check myself on on what what counsel I would get. Uh, many times. Counsel requires that I be silent. Because sometimes you need to take in all the information. In fact, all the time you need to take in all the information. And when I, when I am so ready to give a, an answer, it might not, it's probably not right. I need, I need time. Uh, but so, so keep that in mind. But she followed Naomi's counsel. I think Naomi, Naomi had enough time to realize that th this went bad. This went bad with my husband, my sons. It's time to go back. We're going back. She has, uh, Naomi has kindred, um, uh, kin in, in uh, Israel, in Jerusalem. And so she's, uh, she's going to uh, give counsel to Ruth. Uh, Ruth's the younger one. Ruth's the, a beautiful lady, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, uh, I think she said she was a beautiful lady. But, but uh, she's like, okay, so uh, you're going to have to feed us. And, and I've, got, I've got kindred here. And so I know who has the resources. Uh, uh, and based on your personality, based on what you're going to do, I, I think the Lord will bless. And so um, in Proverbs 1.5, it says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. So Ruth uh, told Naomi when they left Moab, whither thou, uh, again, that was the verse we talked about in 16, that she said, I will follow you. Wherever we go, we're gonna go I'm going to go. Wherever we lodge, we're going to lodge, and your people will be my people, your God will be my God. And Naomi now had counsel for Ruth um, to trust her and, uh, and to access the blessings of her heritage. So number one, uh, sub one here, she is to go to Boaz's field. Boaz was a, 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 her husband's brother. He was a brother, yeah. Um, and and uh, so uh, 
uh, he was a kinsman of her husband, and he was a man of wealth. This is in Ruth 2, 1 through 2. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a, mi- a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and cl- glean ears of corn after him, in, who, in whose sight I, might, I shall find grace. Um, and she said to her, Go, my daughter. Uh, so she went to Boaz's field. He, was a, uh, he had fields of corn. He had servants. He had people uh, gathering the corn. And there was a, a, a practice that um, uh, you could, uh, if there was leftovers, you can glean some for yourself as a, as a servant, for your family, uh, whatever was left over. If there wasn't anything left over, uh, there wasn't much to glean. But she, she is going to go and try to find grace in Boaz's, in his eyes, as field. And so, so she did. Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more what she did there. And then, secondly, go to Boaz's feet. In our, in our, in our book here, we, in chap, there's only four chapters in this book. It's a small little book. But in chapter 3, verse 6 through 7, and she went down into the floor and did according to all that her mother had bade her, the law, mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn, and she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. She... Uh, uh, Boaz had uh, taken a liking to her, uh, but he was, he, had, he was tired. He went to uh, sleep after, the, I guess, they had a big party or whatever, and uh, she uncovered his feet. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think pastors talked about it before, about what that means, but she was basically, um, uh, she was basically giving herself to him, but not in, a, in, a, not in an untowardly way. Um, and so, uh, so it, 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 this was an important symbol. You can also think of it as she was coming to the feet of someone who could save her. We should come to the, the feet of the Savior every day of our life. Because he has saved us. And, and he is worthy for us to be at his feet. Uh, we are going to want to be at his feet when, when we're in heaven. We want to be uh, at the feet of the master, right? Right? That's that kind of, that, that, that look here. Um, and so, so she would, did both things. She went to his field. To, uh, she got noticed by Boaz. Uh, he, he, ha, he had a liking for her. He had a, a soft heart for her. And then later on, uh, through that, um, she, she went to his feet um, to commit herself to him. We need to boldly come to the throne of grace. And that's kind of what that represents. Boldly come to the throne of the grace out of Hebrews 4.16. And we need, to, uh, we need to direct other people to that throne of grace. Naomi directed Ruth to the area where her kinsman was. And we have a savior that we need to re- direct others to. Uh, John 1.41, uh, uh, he findeth, and he, he first findeth his own brother si- Simon and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And John 1.45, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God. Come and see in 4.29, which uh, told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ, the woman at the well? Come and see, I love that. Come and see. We have the opportunity to go to the doors of people in this area and say, I want you to come and see. I pray that when people walk through the door, they come and see Jesus in our lives, in our pastor's life, in the words that's preached here. Come and see. Don't just come and listen. Come and see. See God work in people's lives. See God work in, in the Wheeling's lives. See God work in, in, in all of our lives. We all have a part of it. Come and see. We have that to share. So Ruth was faithful in following her mother-in-law. She was also fervent in laboring. We ought to be the best laborers there are as a Christian. Our testimony through our labor should be, um, uh, should be Christ-like. Uh, it's once said by a, by a pastor, um, uh, laziness is the scourge of ministry. We all have 24 hours in a day. And so uh, it's what we do with that. Nobody gets any more, nobody gets any less. But it's what we do with that. 
And there are times when you divide up between your family and divide up between your ministry, divide up between your work. But we need to, we need to redeem that time, it, uh, make wise and sacred use of the time that we are given. In Ephesians 5.16, it talks about that because the days are evil. It means the days are, are waxing old and Christ is coming soon. So uh, fervent and laboring. A little, I'll give you a little funny thing here. Um, you ever been caught napping at work? Hopefully if not, if you're a security guard, hopefully not. But 10 best excuses when you're caught napping. Number 10, they told me at the blood bank this might, be, this might happen. <laughs> Number nine, this is just a 15 minute power nap like they raved about in the time management course you sent me to. <laughs> Number eight, whew, I guess I left the top off the whiteout. You probably got here just in time. Number seven, I wasn't sleeping. I was meditating in the mission statement and envisioning a new paradigm. <laughs> Number six, I was testing my keyboard for drool resistance. Number five, I was doing a highly specific yoga exercise to relieve work-related stress. Are you discriminatory toward people who practice yoga? Number four, why did you interrupt me? I had almost figured out the solution to our biggest problem. Number three, the coffee machine was broken, pastor. Uh, number two, someone must have put decaf in the wrong pot, pastor. And the number one best thing to say if you got caught sleeping at your desk is, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. That's a good funny, but we do need to be, uh, our, our testimony uh, is dependent on, uh, dependent on us being um, good laborers, being, uh, being smart with our time. So, what did, what did Ruth do? Uh, how was she fervent and labored? She went to the harvest. In Ruth 2, 3, she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the kindred of, Ami, of, of Elimelech. Ruth went uh, where the harvest was taking place. She was going to where, she, she said, I know I can do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to glean. I'm going to help with the harvest, and I'm going to glean uh, ears of corn. And, uh, and she was going to be where the people were working, and she was going to be the best worker. In fact, let her be, she stayed at the harvest. So she kept up fast by the maidens. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother in law. That was Ruth 2 23. She would start. Uh, most people will not finish what, will remember what your work was, but they'll remember how you started and they'll remember how you finished. Yeah. Right? Uh, You'll remember if, and it's not necessarily that you have to stay late, but it's just they'll remember the guy, person who puts in all the effort, right? I'm sure Brother Tracy knows how Brother Davis works. Brother Davis. <laughs> and he'll know if he, no, no. But, but they, people do remember how you start and how you finish. They'll remember how you came into the job when I hired you, and they'll remember if you've gotten better or done great jobs through, through the time that you've been working. So in her case, uh, she was going to be, uh, she was going to stay in the harvest. And she, in, in fact, I want to say, uh, she stuck to the job until the harvesting was done. And Boaz took a notice of it. He noticed her. In fact, he, uh, he was very, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So he, 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 he was very noticeable about that. I've got one more funny for you. We've got time. Um, the ant and the grasshopper. It might be an Aesop's fable. I'm thinking. Um, the ant works hard in the withering heat. This is the original version. Uh, works hard in the withering heat all summer long, building his house and laying up supplies for winter. The grasshopper thinks he's a fool and laughs and dances and plays the summer way. Come winter, the ant is warm and well fed. The grasshopper, so, grasshopper, however, has no food, no shelter, so he dies out in the cold. That's the original version. Here's the modern day American version a few years back. The ant works hard in the withering heat all summer long, building his house and laying up supplies for winter. The grasshopper thinks he's a fool and laughs and dances and plays the summer way. Come winter, he's, the shivering grasshopper calls a press conference and demands to know why the ant should be allowed to be warm and well-fed while others are cold and starving. CBS, NBC, and ABC show up to provide pictures of the shivering grasshopper next to a video of the ant in his comfortable home with a stable, with a stable filled with food. America is stunned by the sharp contrast. How can it be in a country of such wealth this poor grasshopper is allowed to suffer so? 
Then a representative of the NAGB, the National Association of Green Bugs, shows up on Nightline and charges the ant with green bias and makes the case that the grasshopper is the victim of 30 million years of greenism. Yeah. Kermit the Frog appears on Oprah with the grasshopper and everybody cries when he sings, it isn't easy being green. You'll see why it's a few years old. Bill and Hillary Clinton make a special guest appearance on the CBS Evening News to tell a concerned Dan Rather that they will do everything they can for the grasshoppers who are grasshopper, no, sorry, grasshopper, who has been denied the prosperity he deserves by those who benefited unfairly during the Reagan summers. Richard Gephardt explains in an interview with Peter Jennings that the ant has gotten rich off the back of the grasshopper and calls for an immediate tax hike on the ant to make him pay his fair share. Finally, the EEOC drafts the Economic Equal, Equi Equity and Anti-Greenism Act. Retroactive to the beginning of the summer, the ant is fined for failing to hire a proportionate number of green bugs and having nothing left to pay his retroactive taxes, his home is confiscated by the government. Hillary gets her own law firm to represent the grasshopper in a defamation suit against the ant, and the case is tried before a panel of federal hearing officers that Bill appointed from a list of single-parent welfare moms who can only hear cases on Thursdays between 1.30 and 3. The ant loses the case. The story ends as we see the grasshopper, sir, grasshopper finishing up the last bits of the ant's food while the government house he's in, which just happened to be the ant's old house, crumbles around him since he doesn't know how to maintain it. The ant has disappeared in the snow, and on the TV, which the grasshopper bought by selling all, most of the ant's food, they're showing Bill Clinton standing before a wildly applauding group of Democrats and Republicans, announcing that a new era of fairness has dawned in America. Kind of sounds like what's happening today, right? So, a little funny. We need, we need to be uh, uh, fervent in our labor. Number three. Ruth was favored with blessing. This is where it finally comes. We as parents um, love to shower blessings on our kids. So wouldn't it be appropriate that God loves to do the same? And he's better at it than we are. He will take care of his children. He tells us that. A fa uh, uh, Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessing. God, uh, <clears throat> God has blessed the nation of Israel and, and, uh, and us uh, throughout the Bible. He, the famine in Israel, he used uh, Joseph to preserve his family in Genesis. The escape from Egypt, God's people crossed the Red Sea on dry land in Exodus. The wilderness wanderings, God provided manna every day for his people in Exodus. The crossing of the Jordan, the, again, the Israelites crossed on dry land. The timing, times of the judges, again and again, God provided his people with deliverers from oppression. David, God gave him strength and courage to overcome a lion, a, a bear, and the Philistine, um, Goliath. Solomon, he desired wisdom. God gave him that and much more. Elijah, God used ravens to feed him. The widow woman, God honored, uh, she honored God, and God's man saw that she had, uh, was provided in a wonderful way. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they honored God and saw his miraculous protection. And then the poor in spirit, the mourners, the meek, those hungering and thirsting after righteousness, all of us, no one has ever come to Jesus with a sincere heart and gone away empty-handed. So God clearly promises that if we put him first, he'll see to our every need, uh, in Matthew uh, 24 through 33, it finalizes with, um, I'll read from 31 to, for time. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God teaches us that every good, th good and perfect gift comes from him. And it is true. It is true. So uh, Ruth, uh, she was blessed. Her immediate needs were met, letter A. Her immediate needs were let, met. And you'll see these uh, words, handful of purpose. Uh, and when she had risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men. So she's gleaning. He's now taking an interest and he commanded his men. This is interesting. He commanded his men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. Don't, don't bother her. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. 
and leave them, that she may glean them and rebuke her not. That's the same as saying that that corn or that wheat that you have in that basket that you're walking back with, you're throwing some out. More handfuls of purpose. You're giving more to her and let her get whatever she wants. I want her to have whatever she wants and needs. She, her immediate needs were, were met. God gives us our immediate needs. In Psalm 37, 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God will take care of our needs, just like he did for, for Ruth. And B, the permanent needs were met. This is where it ties in that God uses anyone that he feels he needs to. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception. She bare a son. Ruth became the great-grandmother of the King, King David the lineage of Christ, a Moabite in the lineage of Christ. There's some other people that we saw that, you would, that are part of that lineage that you go, wow, he uses some amazing people. Rahab, Bathsheba, Tamar, and Ruth. He used women that the average Israelite would probably say, whoo, I don't know if you'd, really good? No, God was, God knew what he was doing. And if they can use them, he can use us. So her permanent needs were met. So Ruth is a great picture. Uh, the book of Ruth and Ruth and Naomi is from defeat to victory. When we have defeats, and we will have them. We will have the lulls. We will have the, the, the lows in our life. Uh, I'm praying not because of poor decision making, Things you, can't, uh, things you can't control will happen. Uh, we saw that with, I don't, I don't even want to use the uh, C-O-V-I-D word this year. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, let's move on. But we've seen, we've seen stuff. We've seen the lows. We're seeing, we see highs too. Uh, we've seen great victories and great blessings. And so when you're down and out, when, when you de feel defeated, just know that just a chapter You've read the books. Uh, there's a typical model in books that there's going to be highs, lows. There's going to be, um, there, there has to be a chapter ending where it wasn't going good. That happens in life. But let's see what the end of the book is going to say. And the end of the book for us is um, either the undertaker or the Lord takes us home with him. That's a good thing. And we're seeing it closer every day just makes your faith grow stronger. Amen. All right. So be faithful. Be fervent. And labor well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the lesson of Ruth, and I thank you for what you have for us, Lord. You love us, and you want the best for all of us. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you just now be in the next hour, be with the pastor as he brings the message, soften our hearts to receive it. In your precious name we pray. Amen. One a few minutes long. All right, let's get ready for church.